Hello Wargamers, I'm Vaser Ramnus and today I'm going to be talking about how to apply the painting techniques I outlined in my last painting video to uh, Fire Warriors as has been requested by some of you. So uh, if you haven't seen that video I strongly recommend you watch that because that's going to be a more thorough uh, overview of what I do and how I do it um, and this is going to be more of a supplementary video. Uh, so that the link to that video will be in the in the uh, descriptions below, and uh, also if you like this video or you like that video or like any of the videos, go ahead and uh, hit like. And if you want to subscribe, that'd be great too. So, all right, on with the show. So uh, this is just a uh, picture of some of the fire warriors in my army. Uh, it's a real quick setup. They're not meant to look uh, great up close, just like a lot of troop choices are not meant to. Um, more work on the higher profile models of course and so this is going to be a quick and easy technique that uh, gets fire warriors done uh, relatively easily and uh, still looks pretty good on the tabletop so uh, all right just like I uh, talked about in my last video you'll want to prime everything in black but after that you have uh, basically three different paints that you're going to use for basing uh, Abaddon black is going to go on all the metallic areas so that's going to be your uh, pulse rifle and then your uh, grenades if you put those on there. Uh, Mephiston Red is going to go on all the red areas so that's going to be the chest plate, the leg plates, uh, shoulder pads, and the backpack. And then Dried Bark is going to be used for all your brown areas and all your gray areas so that's going to be all the clothy area and then your helmet as well. Uh, here's a closer up picture. Uh, looking at uh, the red areas, we're going to follow a similar technique as before. However, it's going to be a little bit more quick and dirty. Uh, Wazdok Red is the primary uh, layer color. Then we go ahead and just wash the whole thing with Agrax Earthshade. Gives it a little bit more of a uh, um, shadowed appear appearance and so it really picks up on the, uh, on the details of the model. And you can just do that over the, the entire uh, red area, you don't have to be, really pick things out. Um, it works out pretty well, just uh, quick and dirty like that. And then go ahead and uh, highlight up the edges uh, with Evil Sun Scarlet. You can see on the uh, shoulder pad here, I do the same uh, single sided highlight that I do with my Crisis Suits. Um, I also do a similar technique with the uh, brown areas. So uh, gray brown uh, is dry brushed on top of the dried bark and then a uh, layer of Agrax Earthshade uh, gets a relatively uh, dynamic cloth appearance. And then for the weapon, just a layer of lead belcher followed by Nuln Oil. Alright, here's looking down at the model of course. Uh, the last thing that we need to talk about really is just uh, highlighting or doing the helmet. Uh, so that's a layer of Dawnstone and then uh, just going over this thin line here in the helmet with Agrax Earthshade and then cleaning that up with a highlight of Edminster Adam Gray. And uh, that's quick and easy to do. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, you can see there's gray highlights on one side of the helmet, then along the optical area, picking out the optics within within the housing there. Um, highlighting on red is basically just the upper edges of, of uh, the plates. I don't spend time to pick out the individual plates on the legs like I do with crisis suits because these guys are considerably smaller. Um, and so it's just quick and dirty highlights on the edges of, of the plates there. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And happy wargaming.